Good afternoon, everybody. You're very welcome here to Glennon Brothers Pierce Park for this All Ireland AIB Club Championship Junior Semi Final between Clunbalog of Offaly and Kilmina from the County Mayo. It's a breezy day here in Longford, but uh, dry so far. The pitch is in excellent condition out there, so it's perfect conditions for football. Apart from that breeze, which is changing, uh, it was going one way, now it's going the other, so it may have an effect on the, on the game. But it's a great crowd gathered here in Glennon Brothers Pierce Park, and we have both teams getting ready lining up now for National Anthem very shortly I'll just quickly go through the teams if I get a chance uh, firstly we'll start with Kilmina of County Mayo in goals you have Paul Groden full back line of Chris Medlin John Keane Keane and John Ryan half back line of Niall Feehan Stephen Staunton and Ron O'Donnell and the middle of the field eight Jack Carney and there's a change there number 24 Neil Duffy replaces Kevin Ryder in the half back line, you have, half forward line, you have Keith Joyce, Sean Ryder, centre forward and captain, and Connor Madden, number 12. And the full forward line of John Midlin, Niall Ryan, and Darla Keevney. And their manager there is John Kelly. And quickly, the Cumbalog team line out as follows in one, Keen Corcoran, two, David Dempsey, three, Jamie Quinn, and four, Shane Fury. Half back line of Eddie Bennett, Ian Curry, and Thomas Morrissey, and Jack McAvoy and Peter Bennett are in the middle of the field. Half forward line of Sean Ford and Keith O'Neill and Shane O'Brien, and the full forward line is Jamie Ging, Daryl Quinn, and Rory O'Neill. And their manager is Jack Kilmurray. And we're just lining up now for a Ron Navian here in Glenham Brothers Pierce Park. The ref today is Maggie Farley from the county of Cavan. And she is ready in the middle of the field. We're just now now Ron Navian. There we are, the, the, the talking is done now, it's time for action and listen to the crowd roar, a huge crowd here in Lennon Brothers Pierce Park, great to see such a crowd here and of course today we'll have no water breaks for the first time in probably two years, so the Mayor Ishka will be busy now today on the sideline, he'll have to be running in and out if he's allowed, maybe he won't be, but we're ready to go here in the AIB Club Junior All-Ireland Semi-Final, it's a huge day for both clubs, a absolutely huge day. Uh, Kilmina line out there they're in the white jerseys with the red numbers and Clumbalog are in the white jerseys with the red stripe uh, difficult enough maybe for a ref they're similar enough the, 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 the jerseys but there's nothing to do about it now we have to just get the ball in and get the thing going a place in an All-Ireland final at stake here in Croke Park and tomorrow week so it's a huge huge day for both clubs and as I say, no rain, it's a bit of overclass cloud, and away we go, Maggie Farley gets the ball up, and away we go. And who's coming out with that? They're fighting for possession, but it's Connor Madden wins a free for Kilmina, and he gives it out now, quick ball out to Keith Joyce, Keith Joyce plays in, a low ball in there, and away we go here with the corner forward, Dara Keevney. Dara twists and turns, give it out to Sean Ryder, the captain, and he gives it in there to Keith Joyce, and, he, oh, and he's just pulled back there, pulled back by Sean Forden. Maggie... Gives the, the, the free to Kilmina. Of course, Kilmina will be very well aware that in the Leinster final, Clumbelow got early goals and they set them up so they'll be looking to prevent them scoring early. Five goals and three points was the score in the Leinster final for Clumbelow, so they're well able to take their, their goals. So that Kilmina will be well aware of that. But a first free of the game now, Dara Keevney takes the shot. And it's over the bar, and the, the great score there by Dara Keevney, and the crowd go mad early on. <laughs> Hopefully they'll have lots of cheering to do, but that's a good settler there for Dara Keevney, get him in in the game. So it's Keen Corcoran now in the Clumbalow goals to get the ball kicked out. 
the breeze seems to be in his face now it's just swirling around that way so he'll he'll have to look up everybody's well marked Kicks the ball out. It goes in. And a tussle for it. And it's Kilmina who come away with the Mio side. Come away with it. And Derek Keeve Neal. A lot of ball early on. Gives a nice ball in there. And here's the centre forward. Sean Ryder, the captain. And he sticks it over the bar. That's a lovely score there for Sean Ryder. Two early scores for Kilmina. Has them now on it. It's two points to no score early on. And that's a great start for Kilmina, Louis. Well, he's delighted with that. John Riley, the manager, will be happy with his forces coming out there. Columbologa getting it hard to get their hand on the ball. But it's very, very early days. Kick out again there from Key and Cork and goes high into the middle of the field and they're all up for it and it breaks down to the Columbologa. And it's Daryl Quinn. Daryl Quinn now is under pressure there from Conor Madden. But Maggie Farrelly said there was a push in the back and it'll be a free into Clumbalogue and it's a chance now for them to get a, an attack going. They have a very dangerous man there, Keith O'Neill, number 11 for Clumbalogue. He was on the awfully under 20 All-Ireland winning panel there so he'll be one to watch out for Kilmina as they come on the attack. Ball in there, well caught. But he's well tackled. Well, Darrell Quinn is well tackled. But he has it again, Darrell Quinn now. He looks up, gives it out, and it's back out again there to Jamie Ging. Jamie passes out the whole way out to Jack McAvoy. Jack in the middle of the field, taps it on the toe and goes. Looks, but he's... Kilmina have men back. They have a lot of men back in the fence. And that ball is going to run out. Is he going to keep it in? He can. Well done there, Eddie Bennett. Keeps the ball in, but just can't get it. He's pushing it back, but Maggie Farley says no. Peter Bennett has it now. And away comes Keith O'Neill. That man I was talking about earlier. He gives it out to his cornerback, David Dempsey. And David Dempsey has a bit of space ahead of him. Turns back. Turns back and gives it to Jack McAvoy again. Jack plays it in low. It's a nice play here now by Clumbelog. Trying to set up Keith O'Neill in attack now. Gives a hand pass in and takes the return. Will he have a go at it? Looks up. He tries. No. He gives it a ball in. Oh, that's a nice bit of interplay but there by Clumbelog. But they're caught in possession and he can't get it on. And Kilmina come out with it. And that's good defended there by Kilmina. Clumbelog probably took a pass too much. And there's uh, Neil Duffy there. Neil Duffy wins possession and wins the free. And it's a free out and a chance for Kilmina to ease the pressure. How Jack Carney in possession now. Jack down the field. He gives it out there to Sean Ryder. Sean gives a nice low ball in and that's a good ball in there's two Kilmina men out front of it but who gets it is Niall Ryan and Niall gives it out to Jack, Jack Carney and Jack has a shot and the umpire's looking to say yes that's over the bar and it's another point for after all the sustained pressure there for Clumbelog Kilmina break and break with meaning and come down the field and get another point and it's three points to no score in favour of the Mayo men after four minutes on the clock that's a great start for Kilmina Clumbelog really need to settle down and get a north there's a high ball out there the wind are on kick out which is important Eddie Bennett going forward now he's been tackled there by Keith Joyce and he's seemed to have been fouled there by Keith Joyce and it'll be a free now for Clumbelog. But once again, Kilmina have men back in defence and they're man marking there. There's nobody free for Clumbelog. They're dropping men back. They have a sweeper there, as you can see. The spare man in the Kilmina defence. Clumbelog are not dropping a man back to counteract that, but they're playing on now. The Eddie Bennett getting lots of possession Eddie and he sees out there Rory and he'll makes a lovely run and Rory is on the ball and he's away will he take a shot no he hesitates kicks it Oh, and it's over the bar a great score there a great score by Rory O'Neill and that's a nice point there for Rory O'Neill he made a great run in and Eddie Bennett saw him on the run and passed it into him and that's three points to one now a great score there for Clumbelog that'll settle them down with five minutes gone on the clock three points to Kilmina one point to Clumbelog the Offaly side are taking a while to settle but there is a breeze and it's in it's in favour of Kilmina there's a second ball on the pitch now as the umpire makes his way out to get it He'll get his steps up now. He'll he'll be happy with that. That'll be a bit of exercise for him today. So we just have to wait. Maggie Farley just holds on there until the umpire gets his makes his way back. Paul Groden now in the Kilmina goals with the kick out. He hesitates. So Maggie was looking to, to maybe pull him up and that, but he just wasn't caught in a couple of miles there. Didn't know what to do, and in the end he just out over the sideline, and it's a line ball to. Clumbelog and they're away with it now the point scorer Rory and Neil in possession again back to Peter Bennett Peter Ham passes it all the way back and they set up from the back and it's Jack McAvoy now in possession Jack McAvoy shoulders off Derek Keaveney there takes the tackle and goes a lovely ball he takes the mark nice catch there by Jamie Ging and he takes the mark plays it back the field 
And takes the return pass again now, Jamie King. Tries to go by his man, but David... Chris McLean is not letting him by. Oh, and he just ran away from him, and then he touched the ball on the ground, and it's a free out for Kilmina. But Jamie just couldn't uh, go at it, but he was well tackled there by Chris McLean. So still three points to one in favour of Kilmina. Six minutes gone. He plays a short free kick. And now it's Keith Joyce with the ball. Keith gives it back. Tap there, and it's back then to Ronan O'Donnell. Ronan plays it back. Out again now, and Keith Joyce goes again. He's tipping, tapping, and he's not sure what to do, but Stephen Staunton is in support of him and takes possession of the ball. He gives it out to Jack Carney now. Jack playing well in the middle of the field for Kilmina. But again, he's well tackled there, and he oh, he does well to get the ball away, and Ronan O'Donnell in support gives it out to him, and back to Chris Midlin, and now it's a lovely ball to Sean Ryder. Sean looks up. Doesn't give it, goes and just gets caught on the underfoot. But away comes now, away comes Connor Madden. Connor gives it out. It's a chance now for Neil Duffy, the sub, to come on. Back out there to Connor Madden. Connor has a shot. That's the first wide of the game. First wide of the game for Kilmina. So it remains three points to one in favour of the Mayo side. So Tlumbaloger, it's a lively game, it's a good, fast game. Two young, fit teams. Of course, the Connacht champions against the Leinster champions here. The other game is Ulster against Munster. That's on today in O'Connor Br- Brother Pierce Park. Here comes Niall Ryan. I was trying to say Port Namo and O'Connor Park and Tullamore. But now, Jack Carney now again. Jack loses possession, but he's under pressure from Jack McAvoy. The two Jacks, two number eights. But it's the one for Columbo Logue. Comes out with the ball, but he just hesitates, goes back, and he's tackled by Neil Duffy. But he plays the ball back now to Eddie Bennett. And he tries to keep it in, and the linesman says it's a Kilmina ball. Oh, it's a Columbo Logue. No, it's a linesman is sure. It's a, it's a Kilmina ball. Three points to one in favour of Kilmina. Maggie's telling him, bring it on, bring it on. So, yeah, so, any messing, you'll be punished. Nice ball in. Oh, nice bit of movement there now from Dara Keevney. The point scorer earlier on. Dara has a shot, and that's a nice, oh, that's just tails out to the right and wide. It looked like it was going over the bar, but just tailed out to the right and wide. Hard luck there for Dara Keevney, but it was a good effort. Second wide of the game for Gilmina. Clumbalogue of no wides with the one, either one point on the board. Three points to one. Kilmina lead. Nine minutes gone. Again, straight down the middle with the kick out, but it's Kilmina win the Clumbalo kick out. Niall Feehan gives it in, and he's a bit of space open enough for John McLean. What will he do? John takes the shot, and he sticks it over the bar, and he extends Kilmina's lead. Out to four points to one. The black and white flags in the crowd are waving now. Four points to one. As you can see from the flags, that the wind is going... In favour of Kilmina, and it's a bit stronger than it was at the start, so they'll have to take full advantage of this. Four points to one, Kilmina lead. Almost ten minutes on the clock. Kick out again there from Kean Corcoran, but it's won by Kilmina again. They're winning the Clumbalog kick outs, and that's killing Clumbalog. Oh, that's a lovely ball in there from Jesse, and it's a chance of a goal, and it's a goal for Dara Keevney. What a goal! They won the, the Clumbalog kick out. Won the ball out in the middle of the field and gave a brilliant ball in there to Dara Keevna and he made no mistake and stuck it to the roof of the Tlumbalog net. Keon Corcoran had no hope and that extends Kilmina's lead at 1-4 to a point. And that's 1-1 now for Dara Keevna. He'll be delighted with the start in the game, but it really they've extended out the lead now. Six-point lead, 1-4 to a point. That's a real killer blow there for Tlumbalog, but they're not winning their own kickouts and they need to improve on that. Because they lost the last two kickouts and losing that kickout... Resulted in a goal, but it was a well-taken goal by Dara Keevney. As again, Kilmina go on the tack, and John Midlin now, he's tackled by Shane Fury, but Shane is deemed to have fouled him, and indeed he did. So it's a chance again now that probably Dara Keevney will take this one. He took the earlier one and put it over the bar, so he'll have another go at it now. But Clumbaloga are failing to win the ball in the middle of the field, and Kilmina are up in the middle of the field, winning possession and setting up attacks. So... Clumbaloge have to sort out their midfield, they have to sort out their kickouts, 
and start winning their own possession. It's vital in this game, and they're 1-4 to a point down, and a chance here now for Kilmina to extend that lead. Dara takes the kick, and that's a, oh, an absolute beaut, an absolute beaut from Dara Keveney there. 1-2 to his name, and it's 1-5 now to Kilmina, and it's a point to Clumbalog, 11 minutes gone on the clock. And the last few minutes, it's 1-2 there for for Kilmina. They've really extended their lead out a few minutes ago. It's three points to one. Now it's 1-5 to a point. So that's a killer last few minutes there for Clumbalog. They need to settle down now. Start winning their kickouts. Kicked again. The same tactic again. Out to the middle and hope for the best. But there, Kilmina are winning those kickouts. Jack Kilmore, will have to have a look at the kickout. But they're lucky enough. Yeah, he was safe. He was going down for the ball. And the referee is right. The referee is right. Conor Madden was going down for the ball and he was tackled by two Clumbalogue men and that resulted in a free. And now Ronald O'Donnell is freed there. Nobody marking him as he comes from his half-back position. Gives it out there to Keith Joyce. Keith Joyce has a shot and makes no mistake. That's a point there for Keith Joyce and it's 1-6 to Kilmina. A point to Clumbalogue. Clumbalogue are at 6 and 7 now but Kilmina are playing some lovely attacking football and they're making no mistake and they're really punishing Clumbalogue. 1-6 to a point. It's an eight-point lead now for Kilmina. And we've yet to see that dangerous attack that scored five goals in the Leinster final. Oh, and we're just looking at the other semi-final down in, in O'Connor Park. It's Geneva Gilla from Carrier beating Den of Cavan. 2-2 to no score. So, a similar similar stories in both semi-finals are very one-sided earlier on. Geneva Gilla from Carrier beating Den of Cavan. And here we have Kilmina... And there to go again, and look at Jack Carney going, it's another chance now. Oh, Neil Duffy took too much out of it, has a shot, and it just deflects out. He should have taken the shot first, but he thought about it. He went back, and he had a goal at his mercy, Neil Duffy, but he just took too long to make up his mind, and if he had scored that, that would have been a killer blow for Clumbalog. So they're lucky that that had been off a Clumbalog man and out over the sideline for a 45. 13 minutes on the clock, Kilmina 1-6, Clumbalog 1 point. So at this stage, it's Jack Kilmurray who has to look and see what he can do to change this up because they're losing possession, they're not winning their own possession, failing to hold on to possession and they've yet to get their attack moving because they have some lovely footballers in the attack. If they can get the ball into them and get a bit of space, they can do damage. But as long as Kilmina have the ball in this half, there's nothing that Clumbalog forwards can do about it. As Dara Keaveney stands over this free, 45... Strikes it, doesn't strike that one as well, but it's a dangerous ball in, and this could go anywhere, and it's, oh, <laughs> Keith Joyce doubled on it, and he doubled on it too well, but it's not too bad, the result is a point, it would look like it could have been a goal, he swung like Cristiano Ronaldo there, but like Ronaldo, and that time it goes over the bar, but if you put it over the bar in soccer, you get nothing, and Gaelic he'll get a point, and it's 1-7 to a point now in favour of Kilmina. 14 minutes gone, 1-7, Kilmina, 1 point to Clumbalog. So he's gone with a different tactic now with the kick out. But again, he just overcooks that one. And it's, a ball, and it's possession again. Now a Nile Ryan in possession gives it back out to Derek Evening. Dara taps it on his toe, goes by his man. And that's us. Oh, it is, a good, it is it's a sweet score by Dara. He's on fire today. He is 1-3 scored already for his team. And it's 1-8 to a point. 1-8 to a point in favour of Kilmina. 14 minutes gone. For the last two years, we would have had a water break in the round now. And at this stage, Clumbalo could really do with a water break. But things have changed now. There'll be no water break today. They have to run right through. So Jack Kilmurray won't get a chance to talk to his team until half time. So... Whatever they can do, they have to do it themselves. And again, they lose their own kick out. Neil Duffy is coming out with it. And uh, Jack McCarney has it now. Jack Carney back to John Keane. And John Keane gives a nice ball in. But Clumbalog are not picking up their men. And by him, John McLean goes by. But he travelled with the ball. He looked to have hit a hefty tackle into the Clumbalog player there. The linesman's just coming out. Aggie Farrell, she'll have a chat with the linesman. She's having a chat with John Midlin first because she saw it too. He, he was in possession of the ball. There was no need to charge into his man like that. And he'll probably pick up a yellow card now for his troubles. He was in possession and he just travelled with the ball and sort of... He, he focused more on, on, on charging into the man and he got his yellow card. John Midlin is the first man to get a yellow. But as I say, it's 1-8 now to Kilmina. Clumbaloga a point. 16 minutes gone on the clock in this AIB All-Ireland Club Junior Semi-Final. 
The winners will go on to play in an All-Ireland final in Croke Park, so the prize is huge for both of these teams. And both of these teams really want to, desperate to play in Croke Park tomorrow week. What an occasion for both teams if they could get there. But only one can get there. And at the minute, it's it's Kilmina of Mayo who were doing all the scoring and playing all the football. one eight to a point. Thomas Morrissey there from Clumbalogue is the man who felt the brunt of John Midlin's heavy tackle. He looks to be all right. He's back in action again. And away we go again. Clumbalogue need to start getting that ball into their forwards. The forwards standing there doing nothing. And it's up to the backs to get the ball out to them. But Kilmina are not allowing that. David Dempsey in possession now. Jack McAvoy. Jack's well marshaled by Niall Ryan. Gives it back to Jamie Quinn. And he gives it back all the way to Shane O'Brien who will play it back to the goalie, Keen Corcoran. And out comes Keen now. There's no runners there. There's no movement from the... Jamie Quinn has possession. He looks up and he sees nothing. But he goes a good ball in there to Rory O'Neill. Rory O'Neill is lively when he's on the ball. But David Dempsey hasn't let them out of his grasp. But Rory O'Neill is still in possession. But there's no, no support play for him. But there he has one man looking for it. And he gives it back to him. Over to the stand side. And it's back the whole way now to Shane O'Brien. Shane O'Brien, but look at uh, Derek Heveney right up there, the goal scorer, doing a defender's job now, and that's a good move in there by Ian Curry, the captain of Clumbalogue. Ian moves forward with the ball, hand passes it in. Now Daryl Quinn looks up, doesn't know what to do with it, plays the whole way back. Now Teddy Bennett. Kilmina have all men back to have. But that's a poor ball, that's a poor ball. Now when more was needed from Clumbalogue, when they're needing the, the, the cheers are going up, uh, I think it's Kilmina cheers. That's a first wide now for Clumbalogue. 1-8 to a point. Kilmina still lead. 18 minutes gone on the clock. So Paul Groden now with the kick out. Neither goalie is having much success with kick outs. The, the Kilmina kick out was... Well, that's a, a better ball out there now. Uh, it's failed. Nobody gets it, but it is. It's won by Clumbalogue and both sides are losing their own kick outs. Oh, and Jack McAvoy is caught there and it's away oh, come Kilmina now with Sean Ryder and he has space in front of him. Sean Ryder decides he'll take the shot himself. Oh, he had space and he just goes to the left and right. He'll be disappointed with that, Sean, because he had more time and more space. He could have brought that ball on, punched it over the bar or even had a goal chance. Decided to take the shot and just didn't put enough effort into it enough strength into it I mean uh, he did put effort into it but it remains 1-8 to a point in favour of Kilmina 19 minutes gone there's a great build up during the week to, from both clubs flags and everything flying but again Neil Duffy wins the kick out and Clumbalogue failed to hold on to their own possession and away they come now and they give it out to Niall Feehan and Niall opens up for him as well and he takes the shot. What does he do? He puts it over the bar. The wing half back comes forward and sticks a point ball over the bar to extend the lead 1-9 to a point. Clumbaloga are in real trouble in this game. I know they will have the win in the second half but the game could be out of sight if they don't start getting the ball into the forwards and start scoring. It's 11 point deficit now. Kilmeen are playing some lovely stuff. That's a nice ball out there. Eddie Bennett collects it. He's fouled and not released. But he gives it in now. But again, they're losing possession. They win it back. Lucky to win it back. Jack McAvoy now with it again. Jack has a man outside. But he's oh, had a tackle by Derek Evening there. I don't know what happened there. Maggie Farley's just making deciding what happened there. She's giving it to Kilmina. So it's a free to Kilmina. And Clumbalog had possession, lost possession, tried to retain it. And she's talking there to Jack McAvoy. Will she give him a yellow? It's looking like Jack is going to get a yellow for himself. Yep, a yellow card there for Jack McAvoy. And it's still 1 9, Kilmina, 1 point to Clumbalog. As Jack Carney takes it, but looks up and takes a short one then. Short one out there to Sean Ryder. Takes it back there and gives it back to Ronan O'Donnell. Ronan's playing well. Gives it out again to Sean Ryder. He gives it out there to Connor Madden. Connor Madden has a shot at it. Well, that one will go just to the right and it'll go wide. A fourth wide now of the game for Kilmina. Four wides, but they still hold that one nine to one point lead in favour of Kilmina. Clunbalog are really struggling to get any foothold in this game. And Keen Corcoran again, he doesn't know what to do, but 
Kilmina have the, the gives it short. Well done there. David Dempsey takes possession, and that's what they need to do. We and Curry. They need to move the ball forward. They're playing too lateral and going back, and they're not getting forward. The wind are free there. Now they need to look up, and men are starting to make move for him, but there's no movement. Eddie Bennett is the only man who made a move for him, and he has possession now. He goes forward. He's pulled back by Sean Ryder. Gives a hopeful ball in there. A hopeful ball, and who's going to win this one, David? Oh, Chris McLean does well. Comes out. Well, he's deemed to have fouled. It's a free out. A free out. Nothing's going right for Clumbalog today. There looks there's a sub coming on now on the Clumbalog team. Owen McAvoy, 21, is coming on. Who's going to go off number seven there? Thomas Morrissey is coming off. So Thomas's day is done. He'll, he won't be too happy to come off. But look at Jack Kilmore. He said there has to be changes made. And Owen, Owen McAvoy is on now. So it's a chance for Owen now to, to make his mark. There's a few drops coming down. We might have a bit of rain. 1-9 to a point. 22 minutes gone. 8 minutes uh, uh, time. And it looks like Thomas Morris, he might be carrying a bit of injuries coming off. The physio is bringing him off there. So maybe it's an injury that resulted in that change. And Owen McAvoy is on now for his chance. He gets an ovation as he comes off. He, he did all he can do today. It's down to the rest of them now. It's a free out now for Kilmina as the rain starts to come down. Paul Groden gives the ball out and it's won there by Niall Feehan. Scored a point earlier on, Niall. Gives the ball out there to Ronan O'Donnell, his other wing half back. Ronan looks up and does well, holds on to possession and waits for a man to come. And Sean Ryder comes and he gives the ball to him. He's well tackled there by Ian Curry, but Neil Duffy has it again now. And it's given in. Oh, but they don't hold it. Eddie Bennett. Eddie Bennett is having a fine game for Clumbalog. He's getting on a lot of possession, doing a lot of hard work there. As they try to come out through Shane Fury. Shane comes out and here comes Jack. Jack McAvoy in the crowd aren't happy with this, but Derek Keevney's the man that comes out with the ball. And Derek Keevney is on fire today. That's 1-4 for the corner four for Kilmina. He extends the lead out. Kilmina 1-10. Clumbalog a point. Every ball that Derek Evney gets, he's on fire. He's doing an awful lot of scoring. So the kick out there from Keen Corker out to the wing. Keith O'Neill with it now. The first real smell of it for Keith, but he's well marshalled and they're not letting loose on Keith because they know what he can do if he gets the ball. Tumbelow come again now, but their options up front are very, very few. There's nobody making that run. There's nobody looking up for Jamie Ging. Not one Clumbalog man has made his way into the forward and has having to do it himself and bring it in himself and Keith O'Neill does well there and he wins the free. But the support play from the Clumbalog players was non-existent. Nobody made the run through so they had no options to give the ball in and they have to get players forward. They're one ten to a point down and need to get players into that scoring zone in order to take advantage of good possession out the field. But it's a chance now for them to get a second score on the board. They really need a score at this stage, Clumbalog. 24 minutes gone. Just a pause there while oh, he's told he can go ahead and take it. He bounces it, he just sizes it up, makes sure he's happy. Takes the kick. That's a good kick. Is it a good, it's going to stay on. It's a great score though here, Jimmy Ging. His first score of the game. And that's a welcome point for Clumbalog. They really need a score at this stage. One ten to two points now. 25 minutes on the clock. Five minutes to half time. Clumbalog need to do something in this five minutes before half time. They need to get closer to Kilmina. Because they're 11 points down at this stage. They need to narrow the gap. It's vital now that Clumbalog get some quality possession and start to get that scoreboard ticking over. But it's a one there by Jack Carney in the middle of the field for Kilmina. Kilmina and he gives a short ball out there ball, but it's not now is a chance David Dempsey goes past David and it's out now to Eddie Bennett or to Ian Curry my apologies he gives it out to Eddie Bennett and he gives it back to Jack McAvoy and Jack gives it in but again it's one on one there in the full forward line and when he looks up there'll be nobody oh, they are making the run through now and here comes Shane O'Brien oh, Shane loses possession but it's well tackled they're well tackled by John Keane and as a, he pushes him in the back and that was an opportunity there but again Clumbalog need to get men up in support of the ball, man in possession and that's not happening now but here's Darry Keevney uh, fighting for possession there I couldn't see he was under the dugout now but Maggie Farley said it's going to be a free to Clumbalog a welcome relief for Clumbalog 
26 minutes gone. 110 to Kilmina, two points to Clumbalogue. Maggie Farley having a, a, re, a word now with one of the Kilmina players. It's going to be another yellow card, I'd imagine. Who's getting it this time? It's Keith Joyce, a scorer of two points, and now he has a yellow card as well. So a free now for Jack McAvoy. Jack gives it into the corner there. Oh, it's going to run out, and it goes, and the, the surface is very quick, so there's no... If it was a heavier surface the way it stayed in, but the surface is in absolutely brilliant condition, and for a ball, low ball like that, it just skims off the surface, and that's what happened, and it's another wide for Clumbalogue. One ten to two points. It's over 26, almost 27 minutes gone on the clock. We'll have three minutes and a half time and whatever the ref decides to add on. But Paul Groden sets the ball up now for the kick out. He looks up and he doesn't have many options when he does look up. So he decides he'll go out there to Jack Carney. Jack breaks it down. Still in possession now is Stephen Staunton. There was a, a famous Irish soccer manager one time called Stephen Staunton. Under any relation, Shane Fury comes away with now Clumba Log of a chance, and Jack McAvoy has the ball, but he just slips under the surface, gives it out, and John Keane is there to pick it up. Just nipped in between him and the ball and won it out for Kilmina. And now he gives it again there out to Sean Ryder, and he gets, takes the pass back, and Neil Duffy is under it. And this is brilliant support play now from Kilmina as forward comes Niall Fee. And Niall Fee, and he scored a point earlier on. Is he after doing it again? He did. He's the second point for the win. And that's what has to happen for Clumbalo. Kilmina are coming up, but they've men off their shoulder. They've men running in, a, in, a, in support. And that's what Clumbalo are not doing. They're not running in support of their possession players. It's 111 to two points. And it's going to be an uphill struggle for, for Clumbalo in the second half. They're going to have to change their tactic and get men forward, but they're on the attack here again. Keith O'Neill is coming back into his own half to try and win possession. Jamie Quinn has it now, the full back. He looks up, he gives a high, hopeful ball there. High hopeful ball to Rory O'Neill. Rory can't keep it in and it's a line ball to Kilmina. Line ball to Kilmina, 111 to two points they lead. So they'll be delighted. Their manager, John Riley, absolutely delighted with this first half performance. He couldn't have expected more. But they did. They won their Connacht final. One, I think it was one... 18 to 5 points they won 13 to 5 points they won convincingly anyway so they're capable of scoring heavily and putting teams away Neil Duffy wins possession thought he was fouled but no away we go again Jack Carney has it oh, he gives a lovely ball in there to Connor Madden and Connor Madden breaks gives a nice low ball in but the Columbo Log backs are not getting on attack and John Midlin twists and turns and John Midlin has a shot off the right boat and sticks it over the bar and it's another point for John Midlin two points for John Midlin now and it's 1-12 to two points in favour of Columbo so it's a 13 point 13 point lead it's very 29 minutes gone on the clock Keen Corcoran takes the kick out. Gives it out there to Eddie Bennett. Eddie is really working hard for Clumbalogue. But again, they're not getting this ball eh, transitioning from defence into attack quick enough. Shane Fury gives it back to Keith O'Neill. And, and there's just nobody up there for the Clumbalogue forwards. There's a whole acre of space up there and nobody in it. And they're all out here. Daryl Quinn now has it. Daryl goes. He gives it back out there to Sean Forden. And that's the sub there, Owen McAvoy gives it out. There's a chance now to have to have a shot at it. We have to have a go. Keith O'Neill has a go. Oh, just hits the upright and goes out to the left and goes wide, a third wide. But at least he had a go at it and had a shot, and that's what they have to do. They'll have to take their chances because they're trailing by 112 to two points. And we're looking now, there's another scub coming in, number 17 there. On the, it looks like Joe Foran is the man to come in. Yeah, Joe Foran is coming on the team there for Clumbalogue. Another change now, just before half time by Jack Kilmurray. And he's replacing the full forward, Daryl Quinn, number 14. So Daryl's day is done, and there's a chance now for Joe Foran to get into the game. The foot now, Shane O'Brien is playing in that full forward position. Daryl Quinn comes off. He's, he'll be disappointed. He'll be, of course, the whole club below will be disappointed with this first half performance. But they are capable of getting goals, and if they can get possession in and around the, the, the square, they can score goals. And that looks like what they're going to need today, even though we're not even at half time. But they're still they're 13 points down. As out comes John Ryan with the ball, gives it back to the goalie there, Paul Groden. 
Oh, he comes out and he's a load of space in front of him. He, he can't believe it himself as he gives it back there to Jack Carney. Jack gives it out to Ron O'Donnell. Ronan breaks the tackle there of Sean Forn and gives a nice ball out there to Jack McAvoy. Jack looks up and he gives it there to Keith Joyce. Keith gives it in his ball, Sean Fury. Sean Fury is under it, but it breaks out. Oh, it breaks kindly there for. Oh, but that's a dangerous ball. Oh, shit. <laughs> Key and Corcoran was going off his line and the hand passed the ball back to him and he wasn't there. And if it was any stronger of a hand pass, it would have went over the line and it could have been an own goal. It would have been a bizarre, but David Dempsey comes away with the ball now. And there go. Oh, and he stripped on. Un- no, he's deemed not to be Rory O'Neill. Rory O'Neill, tackled there by John Ryan. Back out to Eddie Bennett. Almost half time now. I didn't see any board going up for for injury time. But Clumbalog need a score. Imagine a goal that before half time would really lift their spirits. But any sort of a score at all, just to narrow that gap, it's one twelve to two points. We're into injury time now. Whatever Maggie Farrelly decides to play, there's already a minute or two played, so there wasn't very much hold up. There was one injury across there to Thomas Morrissey. That was about it. So it's going to be a free now for Jack McAvoy. He'll get a chance to take it before half time anyway. But they need to get a score here, Clumbalog. They need to put men in there. They don't seem to have men on this side of the post at all. He's going wide over that side. And I have possession. I have possession. Keith O'Neill with it. Twists and turns goes well. Goes round a few men. Gives it out. But oh, the pass goes astray. And there we have a half-time break now. It's half-time here in the AIB All-Ireland Club Junior Semi-Final. And it's a convincing lead for Kilmina of Mayo. They lead Clumbalog of Offaly in a scoreline of 1-12 to 2 points. And Jack Kilmore will have his work cut out now at half-time to talk to his players and try and rally the troops and try and get them going again because they're facing an uphill struggle. They will have a breeze in the second half. But at this stage, it really is an uphill struggle for Clumbalog. As they trail Kilmina of Mayo on a scoreline, a half-time scoreline here in Glen and Brothers Pierce Park, Kilmina of Mayo 112, Clunbalog from Offaly, two points. Teams are back at the pitch now for the second half of the AIB Club Junior All Ireland semi final between Kilmina of Mayo and Clunbalog of Offaly. Kilmina hold a strong half time lead, 112 to two points. The tail of the tape at half, the first half was, first point was scored by Derek Evney and there was followed up two points by Jack Carney and another point for John Midlin left them in a four point lead, but then a point from Rory O'Neill for Clunbalog got them on the board, but then Derek Evney with a killer goal to put. Kilmina won four to a point up and that was followed up by a free from Keaveney as well and another point from play from Keith Joyce and another point as a 45 from Keith Joyce and then Derek Keaveney got another point to his name and Clumbelow got one back there Jamie Ging got a free in the 24th minute but Kilmina finished out the half with four points more by Niall Feehan, Derek Keaveney another one Niall Feehan and John Midlin and that's the tail of the first half Maggie Smith is back now in the middle of the field and we're ready to go the other match in, played in, in, in O'Connor Park in Tullamore between Geneve Gilla and uh, then it's 4-4 four, four to Geneve Gilla and then are four points so both teams both matches are one side of the fairs at this stage but all can change in the second half and Clumbal Oak have to come out fighting now it's do or die if they want to make it to Croke Park on the 6th of February so Maggie's checking her, her watches there making sure everything's in order she's making sure linesmen, umpires, everybody's in place so again the rain has cleared away now still a breeze, it's a favour in Clumbal Oak this half and they'll need every bit of it and away we go for the second half here and Clumbal Oak win possession, Jack McAvoy with it Jack tips it on the toe and looks to see who's coming in support and Shane O'Brien is in support of him. And he gives up a good ball in. Now it's a good ball in to Keith O'Neill. Better there from Clumbalog. But he goes back again. Back out to Shane O'Brien. Shane O'Brien to Keith O'Neill and a nice man running off. That's the way to do it now. Rory O'Neill coming forward. What can he do? Oh, he's well tackled there but gets the ball back out there to Shane O'Brien. Shane has a pot shot at it. Can the sub there? Joe Ford? No. It's cut out again, but more promising there from Clumbalog. A good start to the second half. And they need to get a good start. They need to start getting scores. Because Kilmina are a quality side. As they come out again to Jack Carney. Jack Carney, we were talking there at half time. He's making his way into the Mayo senior panel. And you can see why he's a real quality footballer. So he'll be he'll be a help to James Horn for this year's campaign. But 
Can Mina now starting to play around with the ball with the weren't doing in the first half and they could be caught out doing that and order lucky there. John Keane just got the, the fingertips to get it away and Ronald O'Donnell comes forward now. So they need not to change the from the taxis the first half is good forward play and good fast football. Get it into the forwards because they're doing and that's a lovely ball in there now to Sean Ryder, the captain, and it opens up in front of him. He has a chance, he needs to do it now. Will he do it? He does, and he sticks it over the bar. Sticks it over the bar. Another point from the captain, Sean Ryder. That's the second point of the game, and it extends the lead out 113 to two points where it's come below at all the early play for the first couple of minutes of the second half but Kilmina come up on the break as they were doing the whole time in the first half and when they come up on the break they make no doubt about it and get the ball over the bar where Kilmina they're, they're, they're no half time changes on either side we as as we are when we just the two subs came on for Columbia Logan in the first half but no changes at half time as Kilmina come on the attack again there through John Midlin John McGlynn gives it out to Sean Ryder scored a point at a second goal but gives it back out and gives it out there to Keith Joyce and Joyce adds to his tally as well and adds to Kilmina's tally and it's 114 to 2 points 1-4 it's all Kilmina now another 2 points added on there in the first couple of minutes of the second half so it's 114 to 2 points something has to change for Clumber Logue, but they're up against a quality side they're up against a really good side here and the ball played out there to Owen McAvoy he plays it down there to Jack McAvoy but he touches it on the ground and a free now Connor Madden gives it in he gives it in there to John Midlin and a man over the attack and here comes Dara Keevney what's Dara going to do oh, he tries to slice it in but it's well blocked out by Steve Ian Curry there Dara tried the, tried the fancy stuff, tried to slide it into the corner, but Ian Curry was up to that. He probably would have been better to have a blaster at and He surely would have scored a goal because he scored it in the first half. He made no doubt about it, but he just went for the slide kick there. They're telling us now that a pair of glasses are found in the car park. Whoever owns them, I don't know how they're going to find them without their glasses. Away comes Clumbelog now. Clumbelog on the attack. That was a chance he needs to give the pass but doesn't do it and goes himself. Rory O'Neill had the options there beside him and goes himself. They're just hesitant about taking the chance but there's a chance there now. And that's a lovely score there by Clumber Logue. That's a great score. A point score. I'm not just sure who it is and Lee turned around to me. Well, it was a nice point there and that's what they have to do. They have to have a chance at it. I think it was Shane O'Brien, yeah. Shane O'Brien with the point there. So it's one fourteen to three points. Four minutes gone in the second half. Oh, that was better from Clumbelo. Got the ball up, got into attack to his support play for them. And, and Shane O'Brien finished it off with a nice point over the bar. Kick out now by Paul Groden. Gives it out and it's won there by Clumbelog and away to come again. Now it's better from Clumbelog. They need to move the ball quicker if they're caught in possession. Kilmina will just swallow them up. But it will be breaks through. And oh, he just gives a pass. Doesn't look up and gives a pass to nobody. And it's won again by Kilmina. Just to take a, a second look up. Uh, but Kilmina come away with it now. Niall Feehan coming away with it. It's the difference between them. They're making sensible passes there, Kilmina. But it just off the shoelaces of Jamie King or of John Midlane and he doesn't pick it up. But here come Clumbelog again now. The point scorer a minute ago, Shane O'Brien with it now. Nice ball in there. Nice ball to Jamie King. Jamie King is away. He's getting away from Cliss McGlynn. But he just... Oh, and he, he just ran out of road. But he has the free... It was a good chance there by Jamie King, but he just, the ball sort of got away from him and he sort of was trying to grasp it, kick it out, but Paul Groden cut it out and hit it for a 45, but Maggie Farley was already playing the advantage for Clumbelog, and this will be another chance now for Clumbelog to get another score on the board. Five minutes gone now, it's 1.14 to three points, Kilmina still lead. But this should be another score now for Clumbelog. It's vital now that Keith O'Neill stick this ball over the bar. And he does, oh, and it just scrapes over. I thought it wasn't going to go over, but it does. He scrapes over, and it's 114 to four points now. And that's better. That's his two points in the second half. That's their total in the first half. So it's, a, it's an improvement for Club Below, but they need to build on this. They need to build their confidence and get going now and go at this Kilmina defence. They have nothing to lose at this stage. They're 12 points down in an All Ireland semi final. If they want to get to Croke Park, they have to do what they're doing now and go at Kilmina. And here comes Clumbelog again. And they have to make everyone count. And that's ah, it's a great score. A great score from the cornerback, David Dempsey. Up he comes in there. Now you can hear the Clumbelog crowd getting behind their team because they're after getting three points on the bounce. Three points on the bounce now, 114 to five points. And this is the time now for Clumbelog to try and get back into this game. Six minutes gone in the second half. 
And we're still looking for the man with no glasses. As the ball is kicked out there, breaks down and come below. Oh, but the ball just slips away from Jack McAvoy and Jack Carney has it. And he gives a nice ball into, into Sean Ryder. Ryder goes forward. He gives it out again to John Midlin. Midlin gives it back to Neil Duffy and he gives it out to that man, Jack Carney. And Carney, the crowd will tell you that that's over the bar and the umpire tells us the same as he waves the white flag. And it's 115 to 5 points. That's a good score there for Kilmeenan because Clumbalog were really getting on top and they had won the break, they had won the kick out there but they just lost possession and once you lose that ball in the middle of the field Kilmeenan will punish you every time. So Clumbalog have to try and retain possession. At the minute, Clumbalog are getting more into the game than they were. So Jack Kilmurray will be happier this half with the, with the way they're doing it. They're three points apiece in the second half so they're even Stephen. They're not letting Kilmeena get any further away, but they have to narrow that gap. That's vital now for Clumbalog. And a goal would really make a difference at this stage. If they could get a goal or get a few points strung together and narrow the gap, it would make a huge difference. And out to come now, David Dempsey scored a point a minute ago. Gives it back out there to Eddie Bennett. Eddie is tackled by two Kilmeena men, but he's deemed to have been fouled. And it's a chance now. Plays the ball across. Oh, look up. <laughs> it's here. Lingus is the fella says, but Jack Carney has it. He gives that ball in there to Niall Ryan. Niall has a bit of space out. Eddie Bennett is getting out to him. Two Cumberland lads are there tackling. Shane Fury is tackling. Gives the ball out the field. Oh, that's well won now. Oh, and it just runs away from Keith O'Neill. Just ran away from him. Just He was gone too fast for the pass. And uh, here comes John Midlin now for Kilmina. John plays the ball in. And it's Neil Duffy plays it back out to Ronan O'Donnell. Ronan gives it out the field there to Niall Feehan. But Clumbelow are doing better. They're closing them down. They're not letting them through. Here's Connor Madden now. And back they go. They know they have a hefty lead so they can take their time and just retain possession. John Midlin. That's a good ball there from John Midlin. Out to... And Ron O'Donnell has a try. He says to himself, the young man says, I'll have a go. It's not often he's in a position where he's asked to have a score, but takes the shot, goes wide, five wides out for Kilbina. 115 to five points, still in favour of the Mio team. 9.9 minutes gone in the second half. As Keen Corker looks up to his options now, and he plays a good ball out there. Oh, and it just slips away from the grass with Jack McAvoy. He nearly had it, but it just ran away from him, and the wind didn't help there. Sometimes it helps you, sometimes it hinders you. Connor Madden now will take the, the sideline. There's the ball over there. Takes the ball back. And he breaks the tackle there of Jack McAvoy and goes forward. And now away comes Niall Feehan. And gives it over there to Stephen Staunton. And again in possession, Derek Heaven. He scored 1 4 in the first half. Here's Niall Fee, and now he scored two points in the first half. He's pulled and dragged, but he still retains possession. Gives the ball back out. Kilmina don't mind as long as they have the ball. That means Clumbalog haven't got it, and Clumbalog can't score unless they have the ball. It's 115 to 5 points. And there's John Ryan on his own out there. And it opens up in front of him. Shane Fury doesn't know whether to go or stay. He goes, but Ryan goes by him and gives the ball to Shane Fury's man, John Midlin. And that was a, oh, there's a heavy tackle there by Ian Curry, but no freeze, says the ref. And now uh, John Ryan is still in that forward position and he's going, surely, no, he's, he's not fouled. Niall Feehan has it now. And he gives it back to John Midlin. Will John Midlin have a go at it? He does on the right boot and he swirls a great point and twists it in and gets it over the bar. And a third point for John Midlin. 1-16 now for Kilmina. Five points for Clumbalog. Ten minutes gone in the second half and there's a sub coming on for Clumbalog and it's Peter Byrne coming in for Sean Forn. <coughs> So Sean Foran comes off for Clumbalog and on goes Peter Byrne for his chance at it now. So Jack Kilmurray has made the changes and they have worked to a certain extent, but Kilmina still hold a commanding lead, 116 to 5 points. And really Clumbalog needs scores. I've said it and I know I'm repeating myself, but the need to get possibly a goal, a goal or two maybe at this stage. Wow, what a catch there. What feeling by Jack Carney. You can see why James Horn hasn't been on the panel. And that's now out to Keith Joyce. Keith Joyce gives it out there to Dara Keevney. Dara just slowly patient. No hurry on him now. He'll look up and he'll see what his options are. And he plays it the whole way back to Ronan O'Donnell. 
And they're shouting him to take him on, take him on. They want him to take him on, but he doesn't. He gives it back to Stephen Staunton and he gives it out there to Chris Midlin. Chris Midlin now hand passes it, or John Ryan hand passes it back to Chris Midlin. And there's only one come below forward in their own half of the field. Ball the whole way back there now to Stephen Staunton. Staunton has it and he's running O'Donnell in support. And he has the full back, John Keane, in support. And outside him is Niall Feehan, and there's lots of options for the Kilmina boys. And away they come now, Connor Madden. Connor Madden goes forward, he's followed up there by Keith O'Neill. Connor loses it and come along, but Shane Fury can't get it up into his grasp. He does it as Neil Duffy gets it, and Niall Ryan has a go at it, but just slices off the boot and goes out to the right and wide. That's six wides now for Kilmina. He won't mind that much because they hold the commanding lead, 116 to 5 points. 12 minutes gone in the second half. That's 19 points to 5, it's a 14 point lead. As Keon Corcoran goes short with it this time. And he goes short. Oh, but Keith O'Neill was ball watching there and he was caught, but he's looking to get it back. He comes forward now with the ball. But he's not getting anything easy. Clumbalogar not getting anything easy. Away comes Ian Curry, the captain. He gives it back to his full back, Jimmy Quinn. But three Kilmina men on him and they dispossess him. And away they come and look at if he sees Jack Ford there. Jack Cardy has it. Oh, great play by Keon Cor- Corker in the Clumbalog goals. Uh, that was a dead cert goal there for Jack Carney if he got possession but Keon Corker was brave and he came out quick off his line and he snuffed out the danger a well done good goalkeeping there by Keon Corker but again Clumbalog lose possession when they have it again they would win it back but a goal at that stage if Jack Carney had got his hands on that ball that was going to be curtains for Clumbalog but they still live to fight another day but they need to get that ball in there now it's a high hopeful ball into the full forward line ah oh, well tipped there by Joe Forden but he just can't get a possession as well done there by Kilmina playing well in the fence there Kilmina and out goal Connor Madden gives it across and now in possession is Niall Feehan he comes forward comes forward strong gives it out there on to the on-rushing Stephen Staunton who has a bit of space in front of him now and passes it out to the stand side where you have Dara Keevney over there. Dara plays it back to Stephen Staunton, but he just runs away from him, but there's nobody there from Clumbaloke to take advantage of that, and he can kick it back the whole way to John Keane, who will play it over to Conor Madden, and they'll slowly build again from the back. 116 to 5 points, Kilmina lead. 14 minutes gone. They get all the hefty bounce there off the hard ground. It's hard to believe the ground is in such condition in January, but it is. It's a brilliant kind of groundsmen have a brilliant job done on it. Oh, that's a high one there, just around the neck. Ian Curry just caught him high. Is he going to go in Maggie Farrelly's book? He is. Ian Curry's going to get his name in the book. It's just a high tackle there. And there's a, a sub coming on now on the on the Kilmina team. Joey Smith, 21, is going to replace Keith Joyce. S- Keith Joyce, Joyce had scored three points. So, Joyce. yeah, Keith Joyce goes off and jo- the cheer goes up for Keith Joyce. He scored three points, so he'll be happy with his day's work. If they do get to an All Ireland final, I'm sure he'll be in the starting lineup against whoever comes up from the far side. It's Den from Cavan are losing heavily to Geneve Gilla of Kerry in that half time. They were 12 points down. I'm not sure an update on that at this stage, but and there we have it there. Damien's on the ball. It's 4 5 to Geneve Gilla and 1 5 to Den. So they're coming a little bit back into it. Only nine points in it now where there was 12 at half time. So the Cavan champions are, and Ulster champions are giving it a, a game of it. They got a goal, 1 8. But that's what Clumbaloke need here now. Because if it stays like this, it'll be a Caribbean final. <laughs> And away now, Clumbalog, they're holding possession in their own half. The and he plays it the whole way back to Key and Cork. No, that's a dangerous, dangerous ball to give any goalie. You give him some hope, but now Neil Duffy has it, and there's trouble here for Kilmina. There's trouble. Sean Ryder takes. Oh, what's the umpire's gone to the left and it's gone wide? But that was a real dangerous ball across the goals to the Key and Cork, and really gave him no chance. He did well to scramble back, but the ball came out. To the Kilmina man, and he had a shot at it. Sean Ryder had a shot, but it just went out to the left and went wide. Now, Clumbalo come again now, and Jack McAvoy is under this one. Can't get it the first, but gets it a second time of asking. He's tackled there by two Kilmina men. Judge have touched on the ground, and Kilmina will win the free, and there's 16 minutes gone here. 
And there's cheers going up. I don't know who's they're cheering for. Maybe number 19 coming on there is James Bourne, and he'll replace. He's not going to. We'll just see the board there. The ref is having a chat there. That, yeah. Jack. That's the second yellow for Jack McAvoy, and that means a red. That's the end of Jack's day. I didn't see what happened there. I was looking at the sub coming on, and he's distraught. He's distraught there, Jack. He, he would have hoped for better things today, and it, it's, it's a disappointing way for anybody to finish the game, to go off. So Kilmina now have a man advantage, and they also have a hefty lead. Oh, and that's a, that's a, a ruthless tackle there from Peter Bourne, the sub that came on. He swung the leg at him, and I don't know what Maggie Farley's going to do here, but... He'll be lucky if she only gives him a yellow because he swung the leg. He's only after coming on the field. Is it going to be... He seems to be walking away. It's probably only going to be a yellow. As we wait to see what Maggie Farley gives. The ref is, is, is taking his uh, yellow card there for the sub. He's lucky. I just thought it was a overzealous tackle, maybe, but maybe nothing dirty in it, and we're glad that he does. And here comes 19 now. James Bourne is coming on for Rory O'Neill. Rory scored a point in the first half. It was lively, but look at nothing was going right for Tumbelo Forest today. But so it's a chance now for, for Bourne to get a chance at it. James Bourne has Kilmina build of a man advantage now since Jack McAvoy got sent off there moments ago. So it's really an uphill struggle now at this stage for Clumbelogues. The trail won 16 to 5 points and Kilmina come on the attack again with Niall Feehan and John Midlin. John is still in possession. Gives a great ball out there all the way over to Sean Ryder, his captain. Sean gives it back all the way, but it's not cut out. It's won again by John Midlin and here's Ryder and he gives it to Midlin again and Midlin, he breaks the tackle and has a shot. And it goes out wide. Oh, to the right and wide. Eight wides now for Kilmina. Eight wides and on the clock there's 18 minutes gone. 12 minutes to play in this All-Ireland Club Junior semi-final. A place in Croke Park for the winners on tomorrow week, the 6th of February. And this this stage it looks like it's going to be Kilmina who will be gracing the fields of, of Croke Park well won there by Joe Foran and he wins his free now men need to come up Clumbalogue men because there's five, six, seven Kilmina men back in there and Clumbalogue have one, two, three, four back here but they're on the wrong side of the ball they need to get in now but Keith O'Neill will probably have a shot at this takes the kick Will it stay in? It does, and it stays good for Keith, and it's the second point of the day for Keith O'Neill, and he narrows the gap slightly. It's 116 to 6 points, still in favour of Kilmina. 19 minutes gone in the second half here in Glennon Brothers Pierce Park in Longford. So Paul Groden puts the ball in the tee and kicks it out short, and away come Kilmina. Away they come now through Ronan O'Donnell. Ronan O'Donnell, a young man there, having a fine game today. He looked forward to a play in Croke Park if his team get there, but he's tackled by two Clumbalogue men. He's thrown over the sideline, and it's a sideline ball for Clumbalogue, and they need to do more of that. But now they need to support and look for the ball, make themselves available, look for the ball. There's nobody really coming saying, I want it, I want it, and I'm going to get it. And that's just a hopeful ball in. There's three Kilmina men there, and the man to get it is John Ryan, and he'll give it out, but he loses it. It's a straight pass, and it's given in there by Peter Bourne, and it's given, can he get it? Can Foran get it? Or no, it's uh, Shane O'Brien. O'Brien has a kick at it. It looked to be wide, and it is. It's gone out to the left, and it's gone wide. There, four wides for Clumbalogue. That was a chance there, but there's another substitute coming in on the Kilmina team. Number 24 is coming in. Who's 19 coming on? Yeah, Kieran Shorten is coming on for Neil Duffy. Kieran Shorten on for Neil Duffy. He's down in the program as 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 Nelly Duffy, but I'm sure his he's Neil. <laughs> well, maybe he's Nelly. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, well won there by well done there by Sean or Stephen Staunton. Just went down on his feet. I don't think there was anything. He went down and, and the Clumbalogue man was coming in to tackle him and he just got it and the head. But the Kilmina man was falling as the tackle came in and that's why it happened. But it's going to be a yellow card. Yeah. It's a yellow card for the Clumbalogue man. 116 to 6 points now. With nine minutes to go, as, as the Tanai announces how to get out of the grounds when it's over, Kilmina will be in no hurry to get out of the grounds. There will be the happier side. I'm sure the Clumbalog supporters will be very disappointed going back up the N4 and on into 
Heaton Derry and over across into Clumbalog. They'll go to the village tonight, I suppose, and they'll they'll think about things and chat about where it went right and where it went wrong. But they really came up against a better team here today in Kilmina. And I'm saying that with nine minutes left in the clock and they're not gone yet. I shouldn't be writing them off, but it really is an uphill struggle with a 13-point deficit and a man down as well. So... Kilmina have about an hour and a half journey they're there over over beside between Westport and Newport a lovely part of the world over there in Mayo and they'll celebrate probably in the village tonight but they won't have too long because there's an All-Ireland final to prepare for another one a week to prepare for that so the team won't go too mad yet as they come forward again and forward comes Conor Madden Conor Madden gives it across but there's a loose ball there and Clumbalo win it well and a nice flick up there and away to come now Eddie, Eddie Bennett one of Clumbalo's better players today he really has put himself about and he gives it over there to Shane O'Brien and he take, Eddie Bennett takes a return pass he has Keith O'Neill with him and here comes Keith O'Neill but just loses possession but he has, has been fouled and he, the ref was playing the advantage and he'll now have the free so Clumbalo need to get men forward get men in here Keith might have a shot at the goal it's one sixteen to 6 points 22 minutes gone, 8 minutes left on the clock. He has the shot. And disappointing for Keith there. He'd be disappointed with that. It just goes out. But when it's not your day, it's not your day. And it hasn't been Clumbalog's day today. But Kilmina are a real quality side. And they'll give any opposition a real battle in an All-Ireland final. And I wouldn't be one bit surprised if they, they won it out. Because they really are a good, fast, flowing team and well able to play good football and score which is very important they're well able to score they score them forward so do damage when they get into that position and away to come again Ronald O'Donnell there he's tackled by James Bourne but he comes back over and gives it out and Kilmina now John Keane to full back plays it across there to Niall Feehan and they have an extra man so they have options Jack McAvoy received two yellows and a red so that's the, the numerical advantage for Kilmina as Connor Madden number 12 for Kilmina comes forward he's tackled there by three clump below but manages to swing back round and give it to John Midlin who is free John is under no pressure now and it gives it back to his full back John Keane 24 minutes gone it seems to be petering out the game now clump seem to just uh, have lost all confidence and all energy at this stage as Kilmina keep piling on the pressure and Really giving them a hard time and it's really tough now when you're a man down and you're 13 or 14 points down. It's a tough ask to get up for it. But Kilmina are, are, are flying now at this stage. Stephen Staunton with the ball and they're just holding on to possession and not giving Clumbalog a sniff of the ball. But uh, Derek Evening now, he's been quiet in the, in the second half. He did score 1-4 in the first half, quieter now. But Kilmina come on and they're still just... Retaining possession and keeping possession and it's frustrating for, for Clumbalog. And it can be frustrating for any team and sometimes that results in players lashing out but hopefully they can hold their heads and hold their discipline as forward comes Sean Ryder. He loses the ball, gets it back. <clears throat> Sean Ryder now and it just hits off a head and goes out. I don't know what the ref's head or whose head it hit off. But it's a gr- oh, man just down there. It was a fair tackle. I don't think there was anything wrong on that but she's just having to make sure that Sean Ryder is okay. Took a hefty challenge there. There was nothing wrong in the tackle. It looked shoulder to shoulder, but he just took a hefty challenge. Has gone down. Maggie Smith or Maggie Farley is just making sure that he's all right. It's one sixteen to six points. Twenty five minutes gone on the clock. As Sean, there's a sub coming on now again for Kil- Mina. It's Paddy Keane is coming on here. Whether they would pace, whether they'll give Sean Ryder a rest at this stage. He took a hefty challenge, maybe there as well. Give him a rest. That's what they're going to do. Sensible decision there by John Riley, the manager, to take him off. Don't want to make the injury any worse if he did get a belt. So, 23 comes on. Oh, no. Stephen Staunton is actually coming off. Oh, there's, yeah. See, there's going to be a double substitute here. So, it's 23. Paddy Keane comes on for Stephen Staunton. And then Sean Ryder will be replaced. I see... Maggie Farley indicating a temporary subs there so it's 22 Sean Moore who comes on for Sean Ryder but I doubt we'll see Sean Ryder coming back you know he, he's done an awful lot of work today his job is done I'd imagine they'll rest make sure they can get him right for an All-Ireland final as we go again and Clumbalo try to win possession but fail to do so and away come Kilmina now Jack Carney comes out Ronald O'Donnell gives the ball out 
and Kilmina still hold possession and Clumbalog just can't get their hands on the ball and it's a it's a difficult position when you're out in the field and you're a man down and you're a, a good score behind as well and it's just you just want the game to finish at this stage and I'm sure a lot of the Clumbalog but by no means uh, it's been a huge season for Clumbalog to win the Offaly Junior Championship in such style that they did win it and then to come through a tough Leinster campaign they had to win four games in Leinster of course they started off uh, by beating the Longford Junior Champions League and in the first round and they went on then won the next two rounds and beat a strong Kildare Kilcullen of Kildare in the Leinster final so they can look back on their season with, with, with pride uh, it's been a huge season for Clumbalog, you know, and they'll go on into into the senior B ranks or intermediate in in Offaly next year, and they'll be a handle for anybody in in that ranks, you know. They'll they'll hold possession, and we're looking at it as uh, 24 minutes gone in O'Connor in O'Connor Park, and it's then one eight. Geneve Gilla 4-7 so it's an 8 point lead with 6 minutes gone there Geneve Gilla of Kerry still holding an 8 point lead so it looks like it might be them against Kilmina but it looks here at this stage it has definitely going to be Kilmina with only 3 minutes left and there's another score there another score for Kilmina that was Jack Carney with his third point of the game and it's won 17 to 6 points now and another sub 2 subs 1 for Clumbalog number 18 Tommy Dempsey is coming in for his chance and number 20 from James Groden for, for Kilmaine will get a chance he, he might be a brother of the goalie he's Paul Groden this is James maybe they're brothers or I'm sure there's some relation there can't be too many Grodens I heard not related over in that part of West Mayo so it's a yellow card there for Shane O'Brien he goes into Maggie Farley's book and on comes now Tommy Dempsey for Clumbalogue Tommy replaces Shane O'Brien who just got a yellow card Shane scored a point earlier on and did well so Tommy Dempsey and Paddy Keane are getting to know each other and off on comes on comes James Groden and he replaces Dara Keevney so Dara Keevney's work is done scored 1-4 for his team today so he can be very happy with that and John Riley be very happy as the kick out comes out now and as a chance now for some of the subs some of the subs and boats are on the Kilmina side to make an impression in the last few minutes and try and get a starting position in Croke Park because it would be a real honour and a privilege for anybody to get on the pitch in Croke Park so now is their chance to, to make an impression and to change John Riley's team we're into the last couple of minutes now it's 117 to 6 points in favour of Kilmina so they've held the lead the whole way through and they've never really been bothered too much yeah, but her free he seemed to have been gone away she was playing advantage but then pulled it back and it'll be a free now for Kilmina a free for Clumbalo my apologies and she's bringing it forward <laughs> threw the ball away and he's bring it forward but the crowd are cheering at them and having the crack but there's only a minute or two left now whatever injury time Maggie Farley decides to play and he plays a high hopeful ball into the and they're big up to go to Kilmina come out of it Connor Madden comes out with the ball there's it across there's a back out there now and Chris Midlin the corner back goes back to his goalie Paul Groden and they just want to hold possession and see out the game now they have that strong lead 117 to 6 points it's all but over in terms of a contest but as I say there are men there who are brought on and want to try and make an impression and one of them there is that man Paddy Keane got in a couple of balls already so he'll want to try and claim a place but it'll be hard done because the starting 15 really showed what they had in the first half and really put the bed the game in the first half Ron O'Donnell has had a fine game this young man now he's really a good five minutes I see there's five minutes of injury time uh, that's a lot I didn't think there was that but here goes Ron O'Donnell again will he get a score for himself no he gives it to Niall Ryan Niall Ryan has a shot at it and it curls in lovely for Niall Ryan and that's another point and that's his first of the game but it's another for Kilmina and it's 118 to 6 points and I'm sure when when the fourth official put up five minutes of injury time, the Clumbalo players probably groan and says, oh my God, I wish there was only one to play, but they'll have to last it out for the next five minutes. And it's 5-7 to 1-9 now in favour of Geneve Gilla, so that looks like it's over there. 27 minutes gone, so it looks like Geneve Gilla of Kerry will play Kilmina of Mayo in the All-Ireland Final on the 6th of February. 
So they'll have a chance, Geneva uh, Kilmina, to have a look at Geneva Gillis' match over on video. I'm sure it'll be videoed somewhere. And they'll analyse that and try and set up. And John Reilly will look at his team and mind them now for the next seven days until they make the long journey up to Croke Park. And dare I say it, but Mayo teams in Croke Park and All Ireland final day, but I won't say it because we hope that they, they can go on and win it. They really are a quality side and they've played a lovely brand of football here today. They've taken their scores, no nonsense football, kept it simple and kept it fast, and they really deserved their, their victory here today. And it would be brilliant to see them go on and, and win the. Win the all Ireland final. But Clumalog are still fighting and still going out here. Here comes Peter Bourne. Peter's got a lot of ball. He's a big man there and he's going forward and he's does well there. Is there any support from Eddie Bar? Oh, he just has a shot at it and he was just too far out and unfortunately there was no support to have the, the man advantage, Kilmina. So it's hard, but now Kilmina are just holding possession again. It's 1 18 to 6 points. Whatever part of me oh, you're from, and if you're watching today or wherever in the world you're watching from, I'm sure you'll be delighted to see Kilmina. If you're from the club themselves, all in Westport and their neighbours will be. They were telling me down there that Westport have a new pitch built and it's in the parish of, of Kilmina. So Kilmina will be the claim to fame if they're in an All Ireland final. There'll be no poaching of players by Westport, not suggesting that they do that anyway. But if they were poaching, they've lots of choice here. Because there's some excellent footballers. That's a nice ball in there from Niall Feehan. And it comes out to Niall Ryan. He has a shot off the left boot. And just tails out to the right and wide. The crowd thought it was over the bar. But the umpire said no. It just tailed out to the right. It still remains 1.18 to 6 points. We've 33 minutes gone on the clock. We've another 2. There was 5 minutes of injury time indicated by Maggie Farley. As Keen Corcoran takes the kick out. And he goes and he win one there by Niall Feehan for Kilmina. And he plays it in now to number 19, who is Kieran Shorten. Kieran Shorten plays it into Niall Ryan. And he plays it back out to Niall Feehan. And it's back there now to Chris Madlin. Chris has a shot. And the corner back, will he get a score? And that just goes out to the far side and that goes wide again. So it's still 18 to 6 points. A minute or two left. Maggie Farley will check the watch and make sure that the, the full five minutes is played. But for Kilmina, this is a historic day for them. They're going to be in an All-Ireland final. And it's absolutely brilliant for these players. An honour for their club, an honour for their families and friends to make the long trip up to Croke Park and watch their club. It's what every kid dreams of as he starts kicking a ball as a gossip up against the wall. He dreams that he envisages himself playing in Croke Park but these players won't have to envisage that anymore because it'll be a reality I'm sure some of them like Jack Carney who's on the senior panel for the county will see Croke Park lots of times in his life again but there's many of them here playing for their club all the years never got a chance to play for their county and this will be their chance now to shine on the biggest stage of all in the Croke Park stage in an All-Ireland club final wide there from Clumbalogue for Clumbalogue it's, it's a disappointing today but as I said earlier they'll look back in their season when things settle down and they get over today's disappointment they can look back with you know that huge progress was made this year and why well, they will be disappointed in Jack Kilmurray and his men Niall McAvoy Tom Gorry and Nigel Smith they'll be disappointed today but they have lots to build on and I'm sure they'll go back into the off league now with great confidence and Nobody will like playing against them because they're Leinster champions. And there it is. There's the final whistle. Maggie Smith or Maggie Farley has blown it up. And it's Kilmina who are into an All-Ireland AIB Club Junior final. It's 1-18 to Kilmina. It's six points to Clumbalog. And the crowd are absolutely delighted. The players and they're hugging each other and, and well they're entitled to. It's a historic day for Kilmina to play in Croke Park on All-Ireland final day. It's just brilliant to deserve their win. 1-18 to 6 points. They had some fantastic performances there today. You know, they had scorers all over the field. Niall Fee and got a couple of points. Jack Carney in the middle of the field got three. Keith Joyce got three. Sean Ryder got a couple of points. Chad Madlin got three points. Niall Ryan got a point. And Dara Keaveney was their top scorer today. 1-4. That beautiful, brilliant goal in the first half which really put paid to, to Kilmenas or to Clumbalogue's choices. So... Like Sean Ryder's got a point from play, then Keith Joyce from 
from play that was in the early stage of the second half and they extended their lead out to 14 points but Cumberlough did stage a mini revival in early in that second half and got three points in a row for Trushane O'Brien Keith O'Neill and David Dempsey just when it looked like they might be getting a foothold and trying to get back Kim Kilmina with two more points for Jack Carney and Keith Joyce Cumberlough got another one but Kilmina finished out with another couple of points again Jack Carney and Niall Ryan got his first point of the game and that saw it out as a final score of 118 to 6 points absolutely brilliant conditions here in Lennon Brothers Pierce Park thanks to the Longford County Board for providing such brilliant facilities I think everybody can be satisfied going home I hope the person who lost their glasses claimed them and they're not driving with no glasses and remember when you're going out the door turn right as uh, Tommy says here make sure you turn right and go down the road but Kilmina will celebrate there in the middle of the field but as I say they'll settle down now John Riley will have a chat with them later on and they'll analyse the other semi-final Geneva Gilla a carrier the champions in O'Connor Park I, I believe so that'll be the opposition for them but Kilmina will be a handful for any team and if they play like they play today, I've no doubt that they'll, they'll every chance to be all Ireland champions. Clumbelo go over and they acknowledge their supporters and they thank them for the and the, most of the Clumbelo supporters have stayed on and they give them a tremendous ovation over there and that's brilliant to see because those players have given everything for their club. They've given them everything that they can. When they're disappointed today with the result, they don't need to be disappointed because they came up against a really, really quality side. So does every one of them should be proud of themselves. They've done their club very, very proud. And it's great to see the supporters giving them the the ovation that they truly deserve so we sign off here from Glennon Brothers Pierce Park uh, winners today Kilmina Mayo they'll go forward to the All-Ireland AIB Club Junior Final in Croke Park on the 6th of February for today is their day they defeated Clumbalogue of Offaly on a scoreline of 118 to Clumbalogue 6 points oh, bye that's it